All right, you'd like to do a little data analysis in your phone. It's not just a social media toy. It's actually a tool. So we have over here Google Sheets. Click on that, open up, and we have Hallway Lab 2.1 Hallway Zamboni. You could have any file in here. If you don't have a file, just hit plus, new spreadsheet, title it, Lab 2.1, or whatever it is you want to, and then you create it. All right, and there's a blank. Now I'm going to jump from our blank. I'm actually going to open up the Lab 2.1 Hallway Zamboni that I've shared with you. This one you'll find in the drive. So what you'll see here, we have period non-existent, and then we have our three class periods. Period 2, period 7, period 9. So all the raw data, the time and position data, the average time and position data, it's already plugged in here. So let me give you a sample. These numbers don't match any of the individual periods. Your numbers, you'll go into your class, and then you'll do basically what we're doing here. So you may have already done this, and you can do this by hand, but Google Sheets is just like Excel gives you some uh, tools you can use to make your life a little faster. Anyway, the positions are similar to the displacements. We need to figure out the displacements. So how do you do that? Well, you come over to displacement. Displacement is always how far you are from the start. Well, we started our time zero is at position five. So how far are you from the start? Well, you are zero meters from the start. Then, when you get to time 3.5, you're at position 10. Well, how far are you from the start? Well, you started at 5, now you're at 10, so you are 5 meters from the start, and so on. Now, if you notice here, displacement will just end up being 5 meters less than position. In fact, even when you get the farthest away we got was at the 35 meter position. When we go backward now to the 30 meter position, well, how far is that from the start? You were still started at position 5, now you're at position 30 meters, so you are 30 minus 5, 25 meters from the start. However, this is a little slow, especially if you have lots of cells to fill. There's a formula that will do all of these essentially at once. Notice they are all minus 5, so it's the position minus 5. So how can we do that? We can go up to the starting displacement. Instead of hardwiring the answer 0, we could say, all right, we're going to write a formula. The formula will be equal sign. That tells you a formula. See the little function symbol just lit up there. I'll take it away. There it is in the right next to the cursor. Boom, lights up. All right, so you have a little function here. This should be the position minus 5. There's actually other ways to program it, but that's the simplest. So the starting of the position at time 0 is written in cell B2. So you can either hit the little AA over here, and you can write B, and then go back to the numbers, 2, and notice the cell B2 highlighted. See it up there in red? Or you can just click on cell B2. Ah, so B2. So now displacement equals position. We don't want that. We want it 5 less. So then we just hit minus 5. Check. Oh, we got 0. We should get 0. Well, here's the magic. If you just copy and then highlight all the cells beneath it. And sometimes your thumb will slip a little and you'll highlight extra cells. Yes, it's a little bothersome on the phone. Just redo it. Click inside those highlighted cells and hit paste. Boom! There are all of our displacements. And if you notice, they're all, oh, 10 minus 5, 5. 20, mi 20 minus 5, 15. 15 minus 5, 10. Good, we got what we want. Now this is convenient because of course you could change positions and your displacement formula will just update. <clears throat> now distance, the formula is a little more complicated. So, oh by the way, we should put our units up here. Displacement, the unit meter, and distance with the unit meter. Good. Okay. There are lots of little things you can do. You can highlight this column and stretch it out a little bit if it's a little too small. Go ahead, move over there a little bit. There you go. Good. Now, distance is a little more difficult. You see, distance will match displacement at first. So, yeah, it'll be... And you can hardwire this one. Come over here. So, you choose your numbers. It's going to be zero. Then on the next one, it's going to be five. It matches the displacement at first. Then ten. You notice, you don't have to necessarily hit the check button every time. 
If you just enter your number and then click on the next cell, the number pad stays up. It's a little faster. 15, and so on. However, once you get to the greatest displacement, the 30, yes, our distance is 30, then something funny happens. From, whoop, leave that alone. Yeah, so by the way, if you ever mistakenly click in another cell, and this pops up, and, oh, I don't want to mess with the equation, don't hit any of the buttons, just hit the check. And if you really have a problem, you can always, up on the top there, there's the undo button. That's the arrow that kind of curves off like a counterclockwise next to the check up top, this one. That undoes. The one next to it redoes. Okay, now back to our conversation about the 30 meter mark. At the 30 meter, sorry, 30 meter displacement, that was the 35 meter mark, 30 meter displacement, the distance is also 30 meters. You've gone straight away from the start, 30 meters. Yeah, there have been a couple stops, but it still continued straight forward. It didn't turn or come back. After the 30 meter displacement, the Zamboni then came backward 5 meters. That's why the displacement decreased by 5. It's going back toward the start. But distance doesn't care about that. Distance wants to take that five meters and add it to where it was. So it was 30 meter distance. Now it wants to add five. So this would be 35 meters. And the next one would be, oh, 25 to 20 is another five meters. would go up to 40. But there is a way to program it, and it's fun to get used to. It's a good thing to learn how to do because inevitably you'll use Excel or Sheets or something like this during either high school, college, at a job, whatever it is, even managing home finances. Okay, so how do we do that? How can we make this a formula? Well, first off, if we did 30 and 25, oh, well, if we subtract the two of them, we're going to get that 5. However, then what we want to do is add that on to where we were at 30. So one way to do that, to program this, would be to say... We actually have to start all the way up here at the top. Our starting distance at zero. We'll leave that alone. Let's go to the next box. There's a couple of different ways to do it, but one way to do it is equals take your starting distance, or the distance where you were in the previous time. We can just click on that box, or we can write D2. There it is. Then what we want to do is add on the difference between the two spots, the new 5 meters, so I'll put in parentheses, the 5 meter mark, minus or five meter displacement minus zero meter displacement so now the difference between these two that's how much you've changed that's a c3 minus c2 in your formula add that on to your distance at the previous time and you will get your five now one of the issues that comes up is if you do c3 minus c2 good five minus zero is five ten minus five is five ten minus ten is zero 15 minus 10 is 5. So this, this works well, but watch what happens. We're going to copy, and we're going to highlight all these cells down here. We're going to try to highlight all these cells. Yeah, you might have some difficulties with it, and we'll paste. And something funny happens. This doesn't look right. It matches the displacement exactly, but we knew after the 30 it should go up, not down. Oh, we'll look at our formula. C11 minus C10, that's 25 minus 30, that's negative 5. And so if we add negative 5, we get smaller. So up here it worked out to be positive 5, but then it worked out to be negative 5. How do we fix that? Very simple. Just make your 5 positive no matter what. Well, you know something about that in math. Come over to your formula here and... As you might expect, absolute value goes by A, B, oh look, you don't have any more choices, S. That takes the absolute value of the subtraction. Now, it all looks the same here, but watch what it does down at the bottom. And by the way, all of this is written on the lab document that is in the drive. Boom! Ah, the 30 now went up to 35, up to 40, up to 45, up to 50, 55, 60. Fantastic. We're almost done. Now, one other function I'd like to show you, which you might use in a different lab, is the times, which we used in the classroom. Here, I just hardwired them in, 51 seconds, make-believe number. But 
if you check out, let's say, period two, the times were actually an average. So one thing you could always do for, for another situation is if you have two times, you could make like a raw time column over here, which I actually did in some of the class. So raw time, oh, raw tone, raw time one, and maybe raw time two. And so if you have two timers, maybe the raw time one is 3.7 seconds and the raw time two is 3.4 seconds. And so you can take those two, notice they're in the cell E2 and F2, and then you can average those. So the commands are usually pretty straightforward when you do simple programming. Equals, and once you start writing it, A, V, oops. And you see average pops up right away. Average, then you can say, you can even click on them, E2, comma, F2. Good. And that'll give you an average of the numbers. So now we're not using that right now. You can just use the hardwired times. But that's just another thing. There are many little options in here that you would enjoy doing. If you want to clear, highlight the cells you want. And clear is usually one of the options. You might have to right arrow it. Okay, one last step you can do on the phone. Then you got to jump over to the computer. Highlight everything. Now, I put these in this order on purpose. Sheets likes to automatically use your first column as the X and your second column as the Y. And if there are multiple columns to the right, those are multiple Y graphs. And so here, hit the plus symbol up at the top. Chart. Boom, there we go, there's a chart. Now this is the best you can do at this point. Now you could put titles in there. So you could put the horizontal axis title. That's gonna be the time in seconds. But truthfully, and even the vertical axis, that's gonna be, well, it's gonna be multiple things, but we can just write D for now, meters. But other than that, there's not that much you can do here. So we have to shut down and actually open this up on a computer, which I'll give you a little advice on. But all the steps for it are written on the lab paper. Just go through them one by one and use your brain. It's designed to make sense for people who are willing to look at it and kind of click around. Oh, what does this instruction mean? Oh, I want to change an axis. Let's look for a label or a button that says axis the horizontal axis, the vertical axis. There are lots of ways, you know, right click on things and usually they'll give you an option to edit and uh, you can probably figure it out. But that's good for now.